Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to the KSP Motivation Channel. My name is Kenya. I'm a six-figure Amazon seller. And on this channel, I'm tracking my journey to becoming a seven-figure seller. Today, we're going to be talking about section three violations and how to get past them. So one of the most annoying things as an Amazon seller is getting your account shut down for any reason. And one of the reasons that could be is section three, getting a section three violation. Typically, what a section three violation is, is once you, if you go against Amazon's term of service, Amazon has the right to hold your money and not pay you until you resolve the situation. Uh, personally, my account was hit with Section 3 last year in November during Q4. Unfortunately, for being a Q4, November is one of the most crucial months. And sadly, I wasn't able to sell anything. Um, well, I was able to sell things, but uh, Amazon was not sending me any payments for a whole pretty much a whole month. I was not able to get any payouts, so I couldn't really buy more products because the money was stuck. Um, and on top of that, I had bills due. So it was kind of, it was a pretty stressful time. And if you're going through this right now, I really do sympathize with you. So in this video, all I'm gonna do is share what worked for me. Hopefully it works for you. If it does, go ahead, let me know down below in the comments. During the time I was down and I couldn't source, I did go and do a whole bunch of research, looking at a whole bunch of forum boards, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, everywhere. All the communities that I had access to, I was in there and pouring and pouring and looking for answers. One of the posts that I did stumble on was on Twitter, um, Grant, this guy named Grant. And basically he, he, he apparently was going through the same thing, same situation and was able to get his account up and then he made a post on what he did. So this is basically outlining exactly what he did, what I followed, and this is what worked for me to get my account back. And also um, two other accounts that I you know, tried it on with the same situation. I was able to get both of them back up and all three of them actually, mine and the two other accounts, back up and active using this method. So pretty much um, the thing is, once you get hit with a section three violation, you're going to get hit with the email like this um, and your performance notifications. Um, basically, if you go to your Amazon account, account health performance notification. Yeah, so you'll be hit, you'll get a, a, a notice like this, basically stating the stuff that they want you to send. Um, and stating the reason why your account is currently under review in accordance to section three of Amazon's business solutions. And yeah, so basically it's gonna add, they're gonna ask you to send all these information and valid ID, bank statements, business registration documents, invoice and receipts, supplier information, proof of delivery by carrier. So all of this is basically, and it's gonna state which ASIN you're going to do this for, right? So um, basically what we're gonna do is take this information, compile all this information into a single PDF um, right here that we created, right? So, but following his, this method here. So basically the first thing we did, it, we're gonna do is get the section three performance notification email over here in our, um, our Amazon account. You can basically control print this page itself and save it as a PDF and put it aside. So page one is gonna be the um, performance notification that we got from our Amazon account right here, stating all this stuff. So basically stating they could have an idea of what the issue is about, right? The next thing is a form of ID, right? Driver's license front and back. You're gonna put, take a picture of that, convert it into a PDF and um, put it aside. Um, your business documentation, right? Business information docs, whether that is your, um, what is it? Your certificate of state or your, and your um, IRS EIN letter that you got from, you know, from the one that you got from the IRS website to register your EIN number. Um, you're gonna include both of the documents in here in this PDF, um, preferably in this order as well. Um, or to, to, to the best ability that you can in the order that was outlined in the performance notification that we have here, right? So we're gonna try to use this as a guideline. 
but um yeah um the next thing we're gonna include is the bank statements right last six months i believe whatever they're requesting um business last 180 days which includes full name of individual or the business residential or business address bank information right so basically the business bank account last six months that you um statements that the the bit the account that you made the purchases on right the last six month statements of it um this is so this is what this is representing so it, it is going to be a pretty long document it is okay if this document is over a hundred pages because i think that was the case with mine this is just a demo that i'm showing you guys but basically the banking statements could go on for lots and lots of pages especially if you have multiple bank accounts that you are um that you are using to make to make the purchases because you're going to need to supply each bank statement um bank account that you made the purchases with right so that's the next once you have all your bank statements for the last six months of the uh, account that you made the purchases on we're gonna go ahead and get our confirmation email so um here is asking for invoices receipts um and receipts which include the item description and quantities you may remove pricing information but the rest of the document document must be visible now i would highly suggest you guys don't modify the documents the the confirmation email receipts or invoices don't modify them at all just copy and put them in as is even if the price is showing just don't make any modifications here. I just blacked out my personal information on this one. So it's not showing, but generally, yeah. So we're going to get all the confirmation emails. And all I did was pretty much go through my Gmail. Every time you make a purchase on a website, they send you a confirmation email stating what you purchase, how much you purchase, what cards you use and et cetera. Or you can even just go onto the website itself that you made the purchases and go to your order history and pull up the order history for the purchases that it's accusing you of the counterfeit items. And in this case, this was the ASIN that um, they, um, this ASIN right here, which I believe this one was uh, the Tree Hut products. Let me see, I could probably find them right now. So basically this was the listing right here, as you can see in the small picture here, this was the listing I got the violation for. Um, so th therefore that's the products that you know that i will be showing that i purchased where i purchased it as you can see it's target and um basically all the information here with this displaying the card details which i blacked out in here because you know that's my personal information but yeah so the, the order confirmation for the quantity and in this case i think it was like nine units i ordered or more i don't remember exactly but you want to show the entire quantity how much you ordered in the order and make sure that it matches what was sent to Amazon, right? The next thing is what I included in here, and this is kind of backwards. I kind of flip flop these two pages, but this is gonna be the um, item delivery showing proof that this was delivered. Um, basically you see items from your orders have arrived and the date it was delivered. And in some cases they'll show the tracking numbers, others it won't but this documentation don't do any edits to it just pull it from your email or your um store account and just supply it in the documentation itself right um the next thing that i applied so for me going back to the original email that we got from amazon supplier information if you are doing wholesale you could probably provide this by the way if you're doing wholesale this this issue is probably way easier to resolve because you're actually getting real invoices and you know supply um supplier information you know that's legitimate right um so yeah supplier information which you know is basically target website which is you we're basically showing supplier information through the confirmation email and um yeah where we got it from right proof of delivery as i just showed right the emails here 
Um, bill of lading. I don't know what that is. I didn't, I didn't include it in mine. So I guess that's probably, if you have that provided, if you don't, don't stress too much about it. Um, aside from that import and export document, um, uh, export, uh, brand information quality. So all of this extra stuff, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm not sure what it is, nor did I provide it. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much all I did in terms of that. Uh, these two last pages, I got I added because of you know um, following his steps here. Um, you can see we did the credit card statement as we did in the beginning, the bank statements uh credit card statement number two and then in his case i think he he stated that um the first credit card statement was you know a, the card he's using for his prep sensor of some sort so i guess if you're using a prep sensor credit card statement with my prep sensor as billing address this is my primary payment method for oa um and credit card statement number two with my business as billing address the same address listed on my seller account so I guess if you have, depending on your setup, you know, like I said, if you have multiple banking business accounts, you might want to create include the last statements for those different accounts um, for the business, just, you know, as additional documentation. Um, uh, one page document, here's where I listed each of the seven ASINs. In this case, he got a violation for seven ASINs. For me, it was only one. Um, this is what this last page here is right here that I added. If I could zoom in here, all I did was, you know, put the ASIN name. So here's one page document. Here's where I listed each of the seven ASINs along with the corresponding A Amazon listing title, right? So I have the ASIN, the Amazon listing title, right? Then below each was the supplier URL. So here's the source slash supplier. In my case, it was from Target. And for each individual item that was within that multi-pack, I listed, I just basically copied the URL and pasted the title on top of it. And basically put that as my last page to show, you know, where the products were purchased from and also the supplier in this case is Target. So that's that. Um, and in my case, I only had one ASIN, so I only did it for one. But if I had multiple ASIN, I would have done that same process on multiple, multiple pages if I needed to, right? Um, what else? Email order confirmation, email delivery confirmation. Um, one of the seven only had a shipping confirmation, so I used that instead along with the Amazon shipment page. So, um, yeah, that's this right here, the email confirmation and the email um, uh, delivery, proof of delivery. And here, this right here underneath is my shipping confirmation, I guess you would say. Basically, this, this was a snapshot from my Amazon account showing the shipments that these products were, were sent through, the shipping ID. So they could trace 13 units were sent through this shipment and 11 was, um, and, and one was sh sent through this shipment for a total of 14 units. Um, so to get that page, basically all you have to do is literally go reports. Yeah, reports and fulfillment. Once under fulfillment, we click inventory ledger and paste the ASIN that you're looking for. Um, here, I'll custom date, right? And probably go back to the amount, to whenever the shipments were sent out, if you know, or if you don't know, you could just go out to as far back as you can and make to select day's date, generate report. Oh yeah, one more thing we want to select is going to be, okay, detailed view, events, receipts. We want to make sure we select receipts. So receipts will show the shipments that these were in. 
So you could go through it'll, which date, you know, you which shipment that you're looking for. As you can see, these I've so I've sent multiple instances of these. But in this case, I what I did was I looked at the most recent one that I got flagged for, which in that case, I think was these last two right here. And um, based on the order, the the quantity and the orders that I showed, I'll choose that quantity to choose which shipments to show proof of shipment for. So um, yeah, basically, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that's all I did. To additionally, what you can do for that part is if you click on the shipment. So I guess in your case, if you're in the case you're using a prep sensor, you might want to actually open up the shipping so you can see the um, the the uh, address. So maybe you might want to take a snapshot of this page instead, showing the ASIN, if possible, right? Um, maybe if you press print, you can um, actually make this save as PDF and make it all fit into one page and then use that to show, you know, which the, the shipments that the products that you're being accused of counterfeit that they were in this, in whichever shipment that you have, plus the um, source where it's coming from. Right. So um, that's that's for that part. <laughs> I did my best to explain that. Um, and that's basically it. That's what I did. The The next part is um, these four tips that he also provided. Um, so basically tip one, do not annotate or after the documents, I did not annotate or alter. So basically do not alter the documents, not even the pricing. Um, tip number two, provide store name and ID within a short email sent to the appeals team. Um, so if, if you don't know your store ID, you need to get that. Um, tip three, my PDF was over 130 pages long. Be sure it's organized. I use the performance notification as outlined, like I stated earlier. And tip number, it's okay if you don't have LOA or other docs just show that you purchase from a reputable supplier and lay out the chain of custody as best as you can. So basically, if there are certain documents, additional documents that you have that I didn't share in this video, but you think may be helpful to prove the chain of custody, apply that to the documents as well. Use, uh, um, once you have all, what I'll suggest you do is create a folder on your computer put all the documents that they're asking for into it, collect all of them. And once you have everything, look for a PDF merge tool. Um, they have one on Adobe, but you have to pay for it. Or you could just search for a free one online. Just search PDF merge, PDF um, merger on Google. You should be able to find one and um, utilize that to merge all the documents and organize them and this outline as best as you can and just have everything into one document once you have everything into one document that's when you're going to send all that information over to the appeals team so this was basically my email right here to to the appeals team um the email that you're sending this to is already stated in the email that you got so basically include the asins right let them know your ID, merchant ID, and also your store name. In this case, I'm blurring it out so it's not, you know, my personal deed information isn't there. And attach the documentation that you, the docs that you created into the email. And I would say after that, follow up probably, preferably every three days or so here um every day or every other day i'll suggest call up the seller central team um and just ask them for progress you know like don't overdo it you know because really the the phone support team is very limited on what they could do are they they're just literally going to tell you the same 
um, option over and over. The best, I got the better results through reaching out um, on Twitter, the seller support team on tw Twitter. So if you are on Twitter, if you actually reach out to, to Amazon seller help, right? They can and will help you out. And as you can see, um, what I did was basically just sent out a notification explaining to them my situation and my issue and, you know, how ask, asking them if they could take a deeper look into it. So, um, you know, they're very, they're very helpful with me. Um, you'll, you'll need your store ID, mer your merchant ID, of course, so they could help you locate exactly your exact store. Um, but yeah, just work with them, just contact them, you know, message them through and out. Be very, the key thing here is be very, very patient. I know it could be extremely frustrating. I was really, I started doing Uber. <laughs> I was freaking out when my account was like, I thought it was the end of my entire Amazon business. Right. And, and that actually brought me to see the importance of being diversified within this business you really don't know when something can put, come up and just put a halt to everything so we really want to grow to a point where we can start diversifying into other um strategies or uh, other business ventures all together right so um yeah that's all the information i have for ungating this is what i did to get me unstuck what I will do again, if I do come across this situation again, as I told you, I've tried this method three times, three separate accounts, and it has worked every single time. Um, so I, I wish you the best of luck. If anything, if anything good or bad, whatever your results are, let me know. So we could use this video as, you know, social proof whether this method works or if it does not work. But without further ado, guys, I hope you guys stuck to the end. I hope I was able to help you. And until next time, guys, be easy, be breezy, and peace out.